10, the cheating scandals. The royal scandals aren't complete without a little sprinkle of cheating. The then prince infamously had an affair with Camilla while married to Diana. And if you're unfamiliar with the story, the late princess had known about the affair and even had affairs of her own. But the lack of attention she was getting from her husband, also the father of two, Harry and William, was upsetting for her. After a transcript of a phone call between Charles and Camilla was leaked, which side note is very invasive, it revealed their affair because of how sexual the phone call was and was later named the Tampon Gate Scandal. Yeah. You heard that right. During the conversation, a very famous line said by Charles is constantly mocked where he says he wants to become a tampon so he could live inside Camilla's pants. How romantic. All the Princess Diana's lovers also made it their mission to become extreme haters of Charles and even Camilla, leaving the royal affair and the two involved very unpopular amongst many. HBO documentary The Princess even insinuates such Prince Charles may have been jealous of how much more popular Diana was than the then prince himself. Yikes, that's a little embarrassing. But to be fair, the late princess was a true icon in more than one sense. I mean, her fashion choices are still being recreated in this day and age. Her impact was crazy. Now for Charles, I don't think we can say the same. After learning about the tragic ending of Diana and Charles's marriage, we find out how much his unfaithful and negligent actions impacted Diana's mental health. He clearly has narcissistic tendencies to the point where it became detrimental to Diana's health while she was alive. On to number nine, political scandals. King Charles had been accused of attempting to influence the British government in a very shady way. In 2015, King Charles received confidential papers on the inner workings of the British government that even elected ministers hadn't seen. So how did he manage to get his hands on these papers? I have a feeling the excuse that he was a part of the monarchy is not a good enough reason, but for now, let's just say that is why, since it is undetermined. The Guardian received 27 memos, dubbed the Black Spider Memos, because it showed that the royal prince, then prince, was somehow engaged in efforts about a range of issues, from orders of military helicopters during the Iraq War to illegal fishing of the Patagonian toothfish. The controversy here is that some believe it is normal for a royal to be involved in political affairs, while others think the members of the family should stay out of politics. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments section if you believe royals should be involved or steer clear of the politics. On to number eight, financial scandal. Another scandal for us to talk about. Charles allegedly accepted unofficial commissions from a previous Qatari prime minister from his charitable endeavors. Sounds fishy. As a supporter of homeopathy, he'd earned the label of being anti-science. Charles has also drawn criticism for his lavish spendings. The king has six homes on his estate, 11 secretaries, a large staff of servants, many expensive cars, and an annual salary of potentially more now, but 20 million was back then when we found this information. Now I get that he's a king, but it is very interesting to know not only does he have this insane annual income, but on top of that, the whole family is extremely secretive of their wealth and where exactly they're possibly getting this amount of money. The people. Any theories? I mean, I wanna know what you think they could be doing for them to be able to afford this lifestyle. Number seven, charity scandal. The British police had launched an investigation with King Charles' charity, The Prince's Trust, after reports of a cash for honor scheme. Accusations were made that a close aide, Michael Fawcett, offered a Saudi tycoon a, knight, a knighthood in exchange for two million in donations. The investigation started after it was reported that Fawcett stepped down from his role as the sh chief executive of the foundation after being accused of misconduct. It was reported that tens of thousands of dollars were, made, were paid to make up for links to the prince. So basically they were trying to bribe Fawcett by offering him a royal title in exchange for money which allegedly would be going towards their foundation. Sounds suspicious. Number six, not the people's king. As hard as it might be for Charles, a key part of being the king is winning over the people. And as overwhelming his scandalous past has been, it is no surprise that there are still people who do not care for him as king. Many reports from royal sources have claimed that the newly appointed king has waited 70 years for this moment and wants to do as much as he can to become a progressive monarchy and win the hearts of the nation, as well as internationally. But because of their actions, media outlets and those who are more engaged in the royal family drama like us have been diving more 
more into the history of the royals, which let me tell you is not the most perfect and influential history in the world. Tainted by countless controversies and scandals, the royal family has been catching a lot of heat about how they are not using their power for the greater good, but rather abusing it while also remaining secretive. What are your thoughts? Do you think the royal family is being smart about the power they have? Considering the scandals the king and other members have been a part of, is it acceptable for them to be the way they are portrayed in the media? And number five, the Not My King protesters arrested. Clad in yellow and holding signs proclaiming Not My King, protesters against the coronation of Charles were arrested in London. Graham Smith, chief executive of Republic, a prominent anti-monarchy group in the UK, was arrested along with five others while unloading signs reading Not My King, according to tweets from the group and Associated Press. They are under arrest, end of story, a police officer says in a video tweeted by the Alliance of European Republican Movements, an organization advocating for the end of monarchies across Europe. The officer did not say anything further when the videographers attempted to ask why the protesters are being arrested. Number four, Andrew. The extremely problematic brother of Charles was also in attendance during the coronation and obviously what he's partaking in is horrible and extremely embarrassing for the royal family, but unlike Harry, Andrew hasn't self-deported and dramatically burned bridges with the family, which is enough of an excuse to include him from the coronation, apparently. The Duke of York was there, but you may have had a hard time spotting him. Andrew had been barred from standing on the balcony at Buckingham Palace since he's not a working royal, but he is still a Knight of the Garter though, and they traditionally play a significant role in the coronation. But since, you know, he's been moving pretty whack and disgusting, it sounds like the ceremony had been changed to exclude the prince entirely. On to number three, involving palace staff in the affair. Even King Charles' cleaning staff once kept his affair with Camilla a secret from Princess Diana, or at the very least, they tried to. The then Prince of Wales affair with the Duchess of Cornwall, which occurred while Charles was married to Princess Diana, is well known to royal family followers. It's safe to assume that some members of the royal family are dissatisfied with the fact that their affair was getting screen time on Netflix's The Show the crown, making it by far one of the biggest royal relationship scandals. In a well-known interview with News of the World, the Princess Valet Ken Stronach shared shocking details about Charles's affair. He was even fired because of his breach of confidentiality. Stronach claimed at the time that he scrubbed grass stains from Charles's pajamas after the prince would sneak out of bed in the middle of the night to meet with Camilla and even made sure his bed looked like he had slept there by ruffling it up. It was very elaborate, but no one was fooled by it. The valet claimed he'd become ill as a result of the strain of keeping Charles's secrets. He stated to a newspaper at the time, we've all been told not to speak to anyone about anything throughout his time with Charles. And he became extremely ill as a result of the strain of keeping his secrets. Even though Charles had admitted to the affair and married Duchess Camilla, it's clear the firm still doesn't like to talk about the royal stuff. Number two, jealousy. During his marriage to Diana, he had his first significant encounter with disapproving public opinion. Archival footage of the couple touring Australia suggests he was jealous of how much more popular she was. Diana even confirmed this. In the explosive 1995 interview with BBC's Martin Bashir, the pressure on us both as a couple with the media was phenomenal and misunderstood by a great many people. We'd be going around Australia for instance and all you could hear was, oh she's on the other side. Diana subsequently clarified that the waiting crowds were expressing their disappointment that Charles was closer to them rather than Diana, explaining they weren't on the right side to wave at me or to touch me. And finally number one, hiding details about their wealth. The royal family is under few requirements to disclose details of its Wealth, but all I'm gonna say is if you want to find out, it's not too difficult to go all Sherlock Holmes on the family. The family's communications with the government are exempt from freedom of information requests and their official papers are kept secret by Britain's National Archives for at least 50 years. The lack of transparency has led anti-monarchy groups, including the Republic, to call the monarchy an unaccountable public institution that has the power, secrecy, and influence to willfully abuse its position. Without a change, many details of the royal family's private wealth may never be known. Facts about the Duchy of Lancaster's offshore investments were leaked back in 2017, and those detailed roughly 13 million in offshore accounts. 13 million! 
I wonder what else can be revealed if more docs were suddenly leaked. Number 10, the docu-series. If you haven't noticed already from her channel, I cannot talk about Meghan or Harry without bringing up the controversial docu-series that immediately made this couple two of the most hated royals. We have all seen or at least heard about the six part Netflix docuseries, Harry and Meghan, and the tea on these two, especially Meg, is hotter than ever. The internet had been up in flames over Meghan's behavior in the docuseries, and some even felt as if it should just be titled Meghan, because of her dramatic approach to topics that some do not feel deserved a whole series, especially if they wanted a life away from the press and media. Body language experts have revealed that Meghan's behavior and actions show her as a manipulative narcissist who is using Harry's vulnerability against him and controlling him to do everything she wants. Others believe she just wanted to step away from the royals because she was unable to control the narrative of the British press. That is some drama. Number nine, non good terms with the in laws. When news of Harry and Meghan's move out of Kensington Palace to strike out on their own first broke in November of 2018, the public and the press came to a unanimous conclusion as to why that would be. Megan. Everyone pointed the fingers at the new royal, suggesting her alleged difficult duchess attitude was not just reserved for the staff and had caused a feud between her and Kate. Obviously, all that turned out to be untrue, and the Sussexes were expecting a baby and wanted more space than the two-bedroom apartment they lived in at Kensington Palace. Kate and Meghan have always had problems. It came out in November of last year that there was a ton of tension between the royals, as Kate and Meghan were not getting along. This meant that Prince Harry and Prince William were also not getting along and the whole family was not seeing eye to eye. This was super hard on everyone, but especially the queen. Queen Liz was actually so fed up with the drama she made Kate and Meghan sit down and sort it out. Number eight, mistreating staff. Leading up to the Oprah interview, the Times reported accusations that Meghan mistreats her palace aides and staff prior to the 2020 exit. While Meghan denied the allegations, noting in a statement that she was saddened by the latest attack on her character, the palace revealed they were investigating the claims. Members of staff involved at the time, including those who had left the household, were invited to participate to see if lessons can be learned. The statement the palace released said that the royal household has had a dignity at work policy in, pal in place for a number of years and does not and will not tolerate bullying or harassment in the workplace. Number seven, ditching friends for royal status. Was Meg ditching her friends for royal status? A former friend and colleague who said Meghan ghosted her, Gina Nelthorpe Crown, who found the future Duchess to be hugely charismatic when they first met in 2014. Nelthorpe Crown said she last heard from Meghan when the future Duchess told her she was giving up her career and terminating their contract. Ouch. Meg felt no type of way about letting go of her former friends. It seems as if a couple people have claimed that she cut them off as soon as she and Harry became serious. I wonder how Harry feels about this. But at the same time, if Meghan knew these people would share her business, then it would only be safer and easier for her to keep her distance from them. Clearly, they're still talking about her and airing out her past, even though she doesn't talk to them anymore. Did the Duchess make the right decision? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Number six, short temper. Meghan and Harry's whirlwind romance has been in the spotlight pretty much since they got together. With fans and haters watching their every move, this couple is used to getting lots of attention, whether they like it or not. When Harry got with Meg, people started watching Meg like a hawk dissecting her every move. Naturally, when you're part of the royals, people are gonna be more inclined to know what you're like. As someone part of the royal family, displaying strong emotions is not necessarily expected, especially in the public setting. After being invited as a guest speaker at the Power of Women charity benefit, Meg seemed irritated after pictures of her were published where she was seen lashing out at an employee in the parking garage. The pics published in the Daily Mail show her looking pretty ticked off pointing directly at someone. Some believe she was scolding one of her employees while others say she was letting a parking attendant have it. I mean, as a royal, I think Meghan should have been more mindful of her position and the amount of eyes on her, but hey, there's always more to a story, right? And it's hard to figure out with pictures out of context. Number five, the Oprah interview. After the infamous Oprah interview dropped back in 2021, the couple had been accused of prolific lying. With lies being told about racism among other things, people can't help but wonder what is the truth and what is being exaggerated. After getting an award for heroism, royal expert L Angela Levine 
has spoken out about how they did not deserve it because of the things they were that were said in the interview. And if you haven't watched the interview, there have been endless criticism on many things that have happened throughout the interview, from questionable body language to overdramatic recalls of personal situations. She brought up how she hasn't gotten any help with her mental health, which many were also quick to call out by saying that was fake news. The question really is, why would Megan lie about that? Or is it just easier to assume she's lying since they already don't like her? Let me know what you think. Number four, mockery. Megan mocking the royal traditions. Now, as many know, there is a scene in the series that shows Megan doing an overly dramatic take of the royal curtsy she was to do when she met the queen. As she is laughing it up, look over to Harry and notice his reaction. He is staring at her as if he's annoyed with her mocking something that is important to him and also part of his tradition. Interesting. Seeing as if he is uncomfy by the mockery, it's definitely not a good look for Meghan at all. Other than the mockery, there have been several instances where Meghan chose to do what she preferred rather than respecting the rules of the royal family. Meghan's critics would say it was presumptuous of her to think that the centuries old monarchy would suddenly change up its operations because of a newcomer. Meghan was not known to be someone who was going to change herself just to please the people around her. There was a conversation where Meghan had to be reminded that she and Harry were not as high on the royal hierarchy as William and Kate, because Harry is only fifth in line to the throne, while William is literally next. Number three, using Harry for status, our favorite, Pierce Morgan, has been one of Meghan's most outspoken critics, claiming that when she started dating Harry, she dumped him as a friend. In any case, I feel like he might have mixed up associate with companion. In any case, Pierce tweeted, when Harry and Meghan parted ways in January, she used him to get to the top. People say I'm being too harsh on Meghan, however, she broke up with her parents, the majority of her old friends, the royal family, and her family. She also parted William and Harry. I'm done fighting. He also referred to them as a pair of repulsive, deluded, narcissistic tools. Following their announcement that there would be no further corroboration and zero engagement between them and the four UK tabloids, Morgan also forbade Harry and Marco from being discussed on Good Morning Britain, The Daily Mail, The Sun, The Express, and The Mirror. Number two, break in protocols. Here is an extensive list of times where Meghan simply broke royal protocols for whatever reason. She has worn dresses of shorter length than other royal members usually wear. The couple's wedding was not on a weekday, which is royal tradition. While on their South African tour, the couple made a request to only be referred to as Harry and Meghan instead of as the royal titles. The two of them are regularly seen showing PDA, such as hugging and holding hands, God forbid. She wore a Dior to Archie's christening, even though the royal mother typically wears a piece by a Brit designer. The couple announced baby Archie's birth in the, on the gram, and even though traditionally the news of a royal baby is shared on a ceremonial easel outside of Buckingham Palace, and it is highly unusual for a royal to do so, but she hasn't worn pantyhose more than once. As tiring as it was to list all of the times, Meghan has done something different than what is usually part of the traditions or just unofficial roles, and makes us question Meghan's efforts to fit into the royals as she's claimed to do. In an astonishing allegation, the Queen was forced to step in and pull Meghan and Harry in line after Meghan was told she couldn't wear the original tiara she'd picked out from the Queen's collection. Meghan had her heart set on this tiara with emeralds and Prince Harry hit the roof and they were told it was impossible for her to wear it. Apparently, there was a very heated exchange where the Queen spoke to Harry about Meghan not being able to have whatever she wants. She also had to remind him that Meghan gets a tiara given by her. The message from the Queen was very much that Meghan needed to think about how she speaks to staff members and be careful to follow family protocols. The Queen said, not on my watch. And finally, number one, activism. Many people are starting to believe Meghan's actions are more performative than true advocacy. If you want to go and do something to help an underdeveloped region, is it necessary to bring cameras with you to record you doing a good deed? Megan might be onto something, and we're starting to think the bigger picture is to show people that she is a good person who helps others while simultaneously using her status to get her way. Other times the cameras have been an issue is during the dock when the couple was called out for using a royal family approved picture of them walking about to prove a point about them being hounded by paparazzi. Starting off with number 10, getting the press on her side. The new Queen of England appears to have made a conscious effort to woo the very press that had made her life hell for over a decade. 
According to royal biographer Juror, she was seen out and about with Charles as soon as she got married. And when people met her, they were surprised by how warm, friendly, and funny she was. She impressed them. On top of that, she was agreeable to the press and accommodating to the paparazzi. They composed cordial things about her and distributed pretty good pictures and slowly the general visibility of her changed. The simple cherishing connection among Camilla and Charles was likewise obvious during their public appearances, a long ways from Charles and Diana's stressed last trips. It is thought that Camilla has transformed Charles, allowing him to be more joyful with her than ever. Number nine, coronation. Queen Camilla solidified her inheritance inside the English royal family when she was crowned alongside King Charles. Although they've been married since 2005, their love story is not exactly a royal fairy tale like those that have been romanticized throughout history. Instead, it has been characterized by a complicated past that began long before Camilla and the new king exchanged wedding vows. The relationship seems to be one of English history's most convoluted and frightening romantic tales, brimming with embarrassment, treachery, and every conceivable kind of unexpected development that at last shook the royal family to its actual core. Christopher Anderson, creator of The Ruler, The Life of Charles III, USA Today reported, Camilla's relationship with Charles as the celebrated justification for his separation from Diana took the imperial vote and she long battled with public acknowledgement. Number eight, control. Diana claimed that Camilla was trying to control Harry and William's lives, taking them on international trips and cutting off their contact with the palace. Diana also accused Camilla of causing a rift between the brothers and said that they had been hurt by her behavior. She believed that Camilla was manipulating Charles to further her own agenda and warned him not to trust her. Diana's comments caused a storm in the media, with many people questioning Camilla's influence over the royal family. In response, Camilla denied all accusations and claimed she was only interested in helping Harry and William succeed in their roles as future kings. She defended herself against any rumors of manipulation or control, saying, I have always respected them both. Prince Charles also spoke out on the issue, stating that he had full confidence in Camilla's ability to help guide his sons. He went on to say that she was a true asset and had his utmost respect, making it clear he would not be taking Diana's advice on this matter. Number seven, unfit for the King of England. Charles and Camilla first met in the 70s and the then Prince fell in love right away after they were introduced by friends. Penny Jur, the royal biographer, wrote in Duchess, the Duchess was not in any way overawed by him, not fawning or sycophantic. Even though they shared a strong bond, Camilla accepted the proposal from Andrew after the Prince was sent off with the Royal Navy in 73. Even if things had turned out well for the two of them, the palace didn't think Camilla would make a good fit for the king because she didn't come from an aristocratic family, which was very important back then. Number six, Notorious Mistress. Diana and Charles brought in Prince William in 82 and Harry in 84, but by 86, Charles had revived his relationship with Camilla. According to Morton and Camilla's biographer, Penny Jur, who described Camilla as the most notorious mistress in the world, both Diana and Andrew Parker were aware of the affair. In 86, Diana also started a series of affairs, one of which was with cavalry officer James Hewitt. During a 1995 interview, Diana confessed that she, she saying, Diana confessed to the issue saying she revered and was enamored with Hewitt, as indicated by Town and Nation magazine, but the relationship ended around 1991. The public of perception, the public perception of Camilla was incredibly negative following Charles and Diana's divorce. Even before the royal divorce, questions lingered about Charles's future relationships, as the Church of England did not permit divorced people to remarry so long as their previous spouse was still living. Camilla was also not a suitable candidate due to her divorce. Reporters who covered the royals at the time speculated whether Charles will inflict Camilla on the country as queen, calling it an unwelcome prospect. 
Number five, phone call transcripts. In the wake of the separation announcement of Diane and Charles, multiple media outlets published the Tampon Gate tape transcript. Some outlets refer to the tape as Camilla Gate in reference to Charles's mistress. Others speculated whether the tape would prevent Charles from someday ascending to the throne. Obviously, it didn't, because he is king now. The public was so interested that people could call a phone number to listen to the tape of the actual phone call. Dominic West, who played Prince Charles in season five of The Crown, told Entertainment Weekly. A full transcript of the call depicts Charles and Camilla playing the age-old lover's game of refusing to hang up the phone on one another at the end of the call. Number four, the royal family versus Camilla. Even though Charles and Camilla's relationship was very serious, Camilla was viewed negatively by the royals, but Diana was, op received, but Diana was received with open arms. Beatle Smith claims that Charles always treated Camilla, who was Charles's age, as an equal rather than an idol from the beginning. However, Camilla was not wanted by the royal family as its princess. She was a no-go for the royal family when it came to finding Charles a wife. It is no secret or surprise that Diana's two sons never truly accepted Camilla once Charles brought her into the family, and although William might be less vocal about his opinion on her, especially as a future king, Prince Harry never held back his feelings about the Queen. Harry explained that after marrying Prince Charles in 2005, Camilla sought a revamp and was dubbed the villain by the British press because of the connections she was making within the British press that made her dangerous. Number three, monarchy's secret weapon. Camilla has also proved herself to be a very hard worker and a secret weapon for a monarchy low on top tier royals available for public service. She is now the patron of more than 90 charities and has a camaraderie with the public few other royals can claim. She's very chatty with the public and makes them feel instantly at ease, often making a joke or just trying to, or making them feel relatable to her. She is also willing to get her hands dirty. In November 2021, Catherine Johnstone, commander of the Order of the British Empire and chief executive of Royal Voluntary Services, told Hello about a time Camilla was serving meals at one of its lunch diners and immediately started cutting up a meal without hesitation for one of the older diners who had sight issues. I'm not gonna lie, that actually does sound pretty nice of her. Maybe she is gonna be a good Queen of England? I don't know, thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Camilla's choice of patronages has also shown her not to be the blithe country gal she often seemed to be. She has highlighted the often taboo subjects of domestic violence and assault. Number two, drinking problem. Charles is said to be on high alert regarding Camilla's drinking issues, which have gotten him into a lot of trouble. Charles had already persuaded his mother not to push him aside in favor of his son William and Kate, and began by describing some trust issues that exist between Charles and Camilla. Camilla was not satisfied with the title of Princess Consort, which Charles had promised to her when they got married in 2005. She has also aspired to be queen. Her Majesty did not approve until Charles allegedly pulled out his ace card, which we still don't know what it is. Any thoughts? Let me know in the comments. This put Charles on red alert about Camilla's excessive drinking. Before coming to a conclusion, the informant also stated he knows Camilla is a loose cannon who's fallen off the wagon many times before and caused him untold embarrassment. And finally, number one, blindsided princes. It is said that William and Harry were blindsided by their late grandmother's decision to approve of her title as queen consort. According to Christopher Anderson, a royal expert and author, the decision was driving a wedge within the royal family. Here's hoping that everyone got over it. And although it is said that William and Harry are now friends with Camilla, Prince Charles, their father, has a long history of having an affair with her in the 80s and 90s while he was still married to their mother, Princess Diana. In the end, Charles and Diana split up in 92 and Camilla and Charles tied the knot in 2005. According to Anderson, who spoke with a publication, she was begrudgingly letting him do this and one of the key elements was he promised Camilla would never be called Queen Consort. Her Majesty was miserable during Charles' second marriage ceremony. He says the late queen was skeptical about Camilla when she married Charles and the circumstances were certainly challenging. After the queen's longtime husband and consort, Prince Philip passed away in April, Anderson claims Charles was relentlessly pushing for Camilla to become Queen Consort. Starting off with number 10, getting the press on her side. The new Queen of England appears to have made a conscious effort to woo the very press that had made her life hell for over a decade. 
According to royal biographer Juror, she was seen out and about with Charles as soon as she got married. And when people met her, they were surprised by how warm, friendly, and funny she was. She impressed them. On top of that, she was agreeable to the press and accommodating to the paparazzi. They composed cordial things about her and distributed pretty good pictures and slowly the general visibility of her changed. The simple cherishing connection among Camilla and Charles was likewise obvious during their public appearances, a long ways from Charles and Diana's stressed last trips. It is thought that Camilla has transformed Charles, allowing him to be more joyful with her than ever. Number nine, coronation. Queen Camilla solidified her inheritance inside the English royal family when she was crowned alongside King Charles. Although they've been married since 2005, their love story is not exactly a royal fairy tale like those that have been romanticized throughout history. Instead, it has been characterized by a complicated past that began long before Camilla and the new king exchanged wedding vows. The relationship seems to be one of English history's most convoluted and frightening romantic tales, brimming with embarrassment, treachery, and every conceivable kind of unexpected development that at last shook the royal family to its actual core. Christopher Anderson, creator of The Ruler, The Life of Charles III, USA Today reported, Camilla's relationship with Charles as the celebrated justification for his separation from Diana took the imperial boat and she long battled with public acknowledgement. Number eight, control. Diana claimed that Camilla was trying to control Harry and William's lives, taking them on international trips and cutting off their contact with the palace. Diana also accused Camilla of causing a rift between the brothers and said that they had been hurt by her behavior. She believed that Camilla was manipulating Charles to further her own agenda and warned him not to trust her. Diana's comments caused a storm in the media, with many people questioning Camilla's influence over the royal family. In response, Camilla denied all accusations and claimed she was only interested in helping Harry and William succeed in their roles as future kings. She defended herself against any rumors of manipulation or control, saying, I have always respected them both. Prince Charles also spoke out on the issue, stating that he had full confidence in Camilla's ability to help guide his sons. He went on to say that she was a true asset and had his utmost respect, making it clear he would not be taking Diana's advice on this matter. Number seven, unfit for the King of England. Charles and Camilla first met in the 70s and the then Prince fell in love right away after they were introduced by friends. Penny Jur, the royal biographer, wrote in Duchess, the Duchess was not in any way overawed by him, not fawning or sycophantic. Even though they shared a strong bond, Camilla accepted the proposal from Andrew after the Prince was sent off with the Royal Navy in 73. Even if things had turned out well for the two of them, the palace didn't think Camilla would make a good fit for the king because she didn't come from an aristocratic family, which was very important back then. Number six, Notorious Mistress. Diana and Charles brought in Prince William in 82 and Harry in 84, but by 86, Charles had revived his relationship with Camilla. According to Morton and Camilla's biographer, Penny Jur, who described Camilla as the most notorious mistress in the world, both Diana and Andrew Parker were aware of the affair. In 86, Diana also started a series of affairs, one of which was with cavalry officer James Hewitt. During a 1995 interview, Diana confessed that she, she saying, Diana confessed to the issue saying she revered and was enamored with Hewitt, as indicated by Town and Nation magazine, but the relationship ended around 1991. The public of perception, the public perception of Camilla was incredibly negative following Charles and Diana's divorce. Even before the royal divorce, questions lingered about Charles's future relationships, as the Church of England did not permit divorced people to remarry so long as their previous spouse was still living. Camilla was also not a suitable candidate due to her divorce. Reporters who covered the royals at the time speculated whether Charles will inflict Camilla on the country as queen, calling it an unwelcome prospect. 
Number five, phone call transcripts. In the wake of the separation announcement of Diane and Charles, multiple media outlets published the Tampon Gate tape transcript. Some outlets refer to the tape as Camilla Gate in reference to Charles's mistress. Others speculated whether the tape would prevent Charles from someday ascending to the throne. Obviously, it didn't, because he is king now. The public was so interested that people could call a phone number to listen to the tape of the actual phone call. Dominic West, who played Prince Charles in season five of The Crown, told Entertainment Weekly. A full transcript of the call depicts Charles and Camilla playing the age-old lover's game of refusing to hang up the phone on one another at the end of the call. Number four, the royal family versus Camilla. Even though Charles and Camilla's relationship was very serious, Camilla was viewed negatively by the royals, but Diana was received, but Diana was received with open arms. Beatle Smith claims that Charles always treated Camilla, who was Charles' age, as an equal rather than an idol from the beginning. However, Camilla was not wanted by the royal family as its princess. She was a no-go for the royal family when it came to finding Charles a wife. It is no secret or surprise that Diana's two sons never truly accepted Camilla once Charles brought her into the family, and although William might be less vocal about his opinion on her, especially as a future king, Prince Harry never held back his feelings about the Queen. Harry explained that after marrying Prince Charles in 2005, Camilla sought a revamp and was dubbed the villain by the British press because of the connections she was making within the British press that made her dangerous. Number three, monarchy's secret weapon. Camilla has also proved herself to be a very hard worker and a secret weapon for a monarchy low on top tier royals available for public service. She is now the patron of more than 90 charities and has a camaraderie with the public few other royals can claim. She's very chatty with the public and makes them feel instantly at ease, often making a joke or just trying to, or making them feel relatable to her. She is also willing to get her hands dirty. In November 2021, Catherine Johnstone, commander of the Order of the British Empire, and Chief Executive of Royal Voluntary Services told Hello about a time Camilla was serving meals at one of its lunch diners and immediately started cutting up a meal without hesitation for one of the older diners who had sight issues. I'm not gonna lie, that actually does sound pretty nice of her. Maybe she is gonna be a good Queen of England? I don't know. Thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Camilla's choice of patronages has also shown her not to be the blithe country gal she often seemed to be. She has highlighted the often taboo subjects of domestic violence violence and assault. Number two, drinking problem. Charles is said to be on high alert regarding Camilla's drinking issues, which have gotten him into a lot of trouble. Charles had already persuaded his mother not to push him aside in favor of his son William and Kate, and began by describing some trust issues that exist between Charles and Camilla. Camilla was not satisfied with the title of Princess Consort, which Charles had promised to her when they got married in 2005. She has also aspired to be queen. Her majesty did not approve until Charles allegedly pulled out his ace card, which we still don't know what it is. Any thoughts? Let me know in the comments. This put Charles on red alert about Camilla's excessive drinking. Before coming to a conclusion, the informant also stated he knows Camilla is a loose cannon who's fallen off the wagon many times before and caused him untold embarrassment. And finally, number one, blindsided princes. It is said that William and Harry were blindsided by their late grandmother's decision to approve of her title as queen consort. According to Christopher Anderson, a royal expert and author, the decision was driving a wedge within the royal family. Here's hoping that everyone got over it. And although it is said that William and Harry are now friends with Camilla, Prince Charles, their father, has a long history of having an affair with her in the 80s and 90s while he was still married to their mother, Princess Diana. In the end, Charles and Diana split up in 92 and Camilla and Charles tied the knot in 2005. According to Anderson, who spoke with a publication, she was begrudgingly letting him do this and one of the key elements was he promised Camilla would never be called Queen Consort. Her Majesty was miserable during Charles' second marriage ceremony. He says the late Queen was skeptical about Camilla when she married Charles and the circumstances were certainly challenging. After the Queen's longtime husband and consort, Prince Philip, passed away in April, Anderson claims Charles was relentlessly pushing for Camilla to become Queen Consort. That is all for today though. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more news on your favorite celebrities and juicy royal updates. And I'll catch you next time on The Rich Life.